Hello everyone, welcome. I am here with Candy Miami. Welcome, thank, thank you so you. much. Yes, Lizzie, how are you? Doing well. <laughs> so walk us through, where are we and what's on our agenda today? Oh my God, we're gonna learn about Coconut Grove today, which is the oldest part of Miami. And it's actually a village, it's not a city. Okay. It's a village within Miami. Yes. And this is beautiful Biscayne Bay, Stunning. which is nicknamed Sailboat Bay because of all the sailboats. It's a very, very active bay. It feeds into, you know, you can go to the Bahamas from here. But um, all of this was a big sailing area, it has always been, even when it was first settled. And so you'll find about four more sailing clubs all in a row down here and one of the yacht clubs. And almost every weekend they have regattas and they sail between here and then Key Biscayne, which is a neighboring uh, sailing club they have regattas out in the bays. You can spend the weekend on the boats. You have a few people that live on the water. Right. Um, the next yacht club down, this particular one, you can't live on it, but, okay. but people can spend the weekend. Okay. Currently in front of what type of tree? These are mangroves. Okay. And um, they are all along the shore, shoreline, they're supposed to be. <laughs> and then you'll have um, some mangroves that are out in the middle of the water. And this is um, actually one of the few indigenous plants here to South Florida. Everything else has been imported. And they are wonderful for our ecosystem. They're very, very important to our ecosystem. It's against the law to destroy them. Um, great efforts now have uh, been made to replenish our mangrove population. There's a black mangrove and a red uh, mangrove. The black is nearly extinct now. So. Uh, City of Coral Gables as well as the village of Coconut Grove have an initiative now where they have mangrove farms to try to reestablish them. Again, because of our ecosystem, iguanas, um, all the birds that live in here. Um, yes, we have crocodiles in, the, in these waters here, but you can see how they walk. And that's how you can tell that it's a mangrove tree is due to almost like the roots of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they tend to walk. Because they keep growing. They By keep them growing. walking is them actually growing. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they just feed off of the, the water. Is that why they're always surrounded by yeah. waters? They grow in the water. Okay. In the road. They're not on the land. They grow some of it in the land, but mostly they have to have this water access. So explain to the viewers, where are we right now? Okay. We are at the epicenter of where coconut growth started. And this is called Peacock Park, not because of the peacocks that we have here in Coconut Grove, um, but because of the Peacock family. Coconut Grove had really, from the 1820s on, had little um, settlement of people. Okay. And the reason that this area had even these straggler settlements is because straight across the way is Key Biscayne and they had the lighthouse, okay? So they were light keepers, keepers of the light. And this whole area, the whole bay, we had a, a lot of pirates that would um, shipwreck the boats that were coming back and forth. And um, people don't realize how old uh, Florida is, you know, but we had woolly mammoths that they found along the shoreline. And very, very old Tequesta Indian and Calusa Indian establishments. So when the lighthouses came in, and that was to help guide the different boats that were coming in so they wouldn't crash right they had to have a keeper so the keeper of the light uh would was settled there right and then slowly this area started to get some settlers because either they had some relation with the keeper of the light actually this was originally called land across from the light our early pioneers you've got to give them credit because this was not a really great place to live because of the conditions. It was not a walk in the park. It was not a walk in the park <laughs> like we are. Exactly. It's nothing like it is today. So the Peacock family came from England. Okay. And um, when they saw that some people were starting to settle here, they themselves came over. There were a few Peacocks. And they established the first inn that was right here. Oh. Right here. And it was called originally the Bayview Inn. Later, I would say, um, after the very first settlers, which were the Beasleys, the Beasleys, and they settled 
in a place over here called the Barnacle. Which I, growing up, there was a guy named Hawk, and he lived in a tree. Wow. He was an artist, and wow. he, would, he would carve things. So we have lots of character in the Grove. The motto of Coconut Grove from the locals is help keep the nut in Coconut Grove. Ah, help keep the nut in Coconut Grove. At Grove. least people own it, that you're a little different here, you yes. like to have fun, but yes. just keep it in here where right. everyone's on the same page of what's going on. Sure. And we did establish um, a parade that happens now. We just so It's a great story. Um, some locals got together and they wanted to be in the King Orange Bowl parade, yes. which is a big orange bowl. <clears throat> and they said we have a um, kazoo band and a conch shell marching band. They said, oh, get out of here. What are you talking about? They thought, oh, a bunch of crazy hippies. So they said, so we'll start our own parade, and it's going to be called the King Mango. And that's a parade that we have in Coconut Grove, and it reviews a year at a glance of all the crazy things that happen in a year. And they make fun of everything. And it's still going on today. Very, very. The whole town shuts down just for the King Mango Show. You know, after after what happened with the early pioneers, then you saw a gigantic movement of artists and writers. Mm -hmm. Hemingway was here for a period of time. Um, you had the, the Coconut Grove Art Fest, uh, Coconut Grove Playhouse, that brought in all these wonderful plays um, from all over the country. So it, we had a lot of New Yorkers coming down here, and that would be the draw. We were mimicking what was happening in New York with the plays and okay. the music, and they all came here. You know, yes. Florida Grove always remained sort of hippie. In the 60s and 70s, you had um, you know, Joni Mitchell, um, Stephen Stills, of course, Jimmy Buffett. All these people used to just play on the street. People that did not want to be almost put into a box. They yeah. like to be more creative in different ways, different lifestyles sure. that really wouldn't match up to what the social norms were doing. Right, we were bohemian. We are at a private boat marina, is that correct? Private sailing club. Sailing yes. club, Sailing okay. club. It's been around for about since the 40s. Wow. And um, it's a very, very active sailing club. You see uh, boaters here, they have a great children's program where you can learn to sail. And then I wanted you to see this perspective because Coconut Grove and Coral Gables intertwine. Okay. And this, um, all the way up to the orange building where that TV plane is coming in at us, <laughs> that's Coral Gables. That's okay. Coral Gables. That's a good visual. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, it's good. Yeah. Very good. Happy here on the bay. <laughs> about a million mm -hmm. under the under uh, a million very difficult to find anything anymore um, so people want the water they want to pay the premium to have the water they do and you know the good thing about this area is the water is moments away you're not like on Miami Beach you know being on the beach it, it's it's a different story everybody gets to always enjoy the surrounded water. by it in some way due to how the roads work the roads work we have a canal system that goes feeds Coral Gables, the founder of Coral Gables, made sure to make the city look like Venice. So he built 14 canals that feed into the bay. So Coral Gables is another tour we have to go on. It's a beautiful city and uh, one of the best maintained cities I'd say in the country. Very. Di this is city of Miami. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, the zoning is different, right. and you know, a big McMansion can be built to a little the next door to a cottage. That can't happen. So it's much more protected. Well, guess what? The tax base is a lot better there. Right. Because your millage rate. So you actually pay higher taxes in the city of Miami to live on the water than you do in Coral Gables. Very interesting. Yeah. But the, the, the insurance is getting prohibitive now, you know, because that's 
insurance costs, flood costs, if you're in a flood zone. And this is all flood, obviously. Yes. So when we get hurricanes, um, yeah, you have to know how to live on the water mm -hmm. because it's, it's, you do have to prepare. And this, this area, we've been very fortunate. We haven't been hit in a long, long time. But, um, you know, you are vulnerable because you are right on the water. And I always tell my clients it comes down to like a risk reward that if you want the beachfront and the water living it comes at a premium but you also need to take into account everything that can go wrong as well yes but also there's a lot that can go right oh yeah so you have to figure out for sure. your, your peace of mind would you rather be in a high rise up, up there or would you rather be right on the water right and there's nothing like it and um you know you, your maintenance is different you have to paint the house a lot more you have you, you have to prepare for saltwater erosion yes a lot of the sea walls always have to be repaired mm -hmm. but honestly the reward is far greater I mean when you think about it we really haven't seen a hurricane a bad hurricane in about 20 years so since Andrew mm -hmm. you know, so that what is that 30 1992 so we've been fortunate very fortunate um, so I love being on the water there's nothing like it here because you're low mm -hmm. it's a very low experience on the water we have manatees that come up here at any given time, alligators, but we do have a resident crocodile named Chewy. Chewy, <laughs> Chewy. And you can see Chewy around here, you know. <laughs> Not today. Not today. <laughs> no, I don't think Chewy's here today, but we do see him quite Well, a let's bit. go ahead, go in the car and yeah. see a little bit more. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, Candy from Miami. Where are we going to next for our personalized tour? We're going to drive through the village now and I'm going to show you uh, some some new developments that are happening here in Coconut Grove Love that. and then take you to see some of the old houses as well. Okay. So you can see how special this area truly is. Let's do it. Can't wait. Okay. Great. And all of these buildings are getting redeveloped here. Um, some are brand new. I'm just going to wait here for the pedestrian. These are brand new buildings, three million and up. But we are now approaching Miami City Hall. So this is the original City Hall, which used to be where Pan American Airlines used to take uh, flights from here to Cuba. That was your first transatlantic flight. And this is where they would go right here into yeah, this and that building. that was the original Pan American building, which has now been turned into City Hall for years. I mean, it's been City Hall. But this is where the city of Miami happens, right here. This is where it all happens. And what a view they have, huh? All on the water. Stunning. They made sure they picked the best view. The best, the best real estate, exactly. What would you say is your ideal person who wants to live in the Grove? What type of lifestyle are they wanting to live? I would think um, it is changing now, but for the most part, it's someone who prefers uh, more of a casual lifestyle, open-minded, bohemian, mm -hmm. someone that appreciates um, living on the water, respects living on the water, is a boater, uh, someone that enjoys walking around this beautiful neighborhood. It is changing when I see these buildings now, you know, you are looking at a much higher end clientele, right? but still a clientele that is um, one that enjoys boating. Mm -hmm. We don't have the nightclubs of South Beach. It is more of a residential neighborhood. Some of the best schools are in this area. Yes. You're close to University of Miami. Miami. Very close to University of Miami. And um, again, if you're a boater of any kind, you have the best yacht clubs and sailing clubs here in this area. Love that. Um, a lot of people that are boaters here, you have reciprocity with other yacht clubs. So. Uh, there's one down in the Keys and they have fishing tournaments. So that's usually the type of person that wants to live in this area. Like I said you have the best private schools here in, in Coconut Grove. And some great, some great public schools too. You have some magnet schools. Carver Junior High is a magnet program. And for those who don't know what the term are, are unfamiliar with the term magnet. Okay, so a magnet school is when they've taken a, a public school and they give it um, a they specialize in, in some sort of a, a course. Mm -hmm. So um, some will span, uh, so, uh, some will specialize in a language, others in marine biology, others in history. And it's like a magnet. It brings certain students that want to study these things there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hey, Candy from Miami. 
<laughs> what was this area like that we're driving through right now a hundred plus years ago? Well, a hundred plus years ago, it was just jungle, basically, and woods. Um, it was the farmland. We saw a lot of coconut farms here, avocado, mango. Guava. So we're driving through an old farm. Yeah. Oh, all of this was old farm area. And then in the, the 60s, um, some of these buildings were built. It wasn't until after the drug trade that you started to see in a big explosion of building because the cocaine cowboys, they had the money. So they're the ones that built Brickle. People don't realize all that money came from cocaine money. And the same thing you saw happening here because this was a big hangout for the, the Coconut Grove um, cocaine cowboys. This area is called Mayfair. And you can see it was all these embellishments on the building, these beautiful yes. embellishments. Wow. Fortunately now is being restored. And there's a very famous hotel in there called the Mayfair. Yes. And Mayfair also now has just been restored. And there are some lovely shops in there that they're bringing back. It was designed by Alan Treister and you can see all these embellishments they saved. Wow. Yeah. So throughout that building, is um, a lot of artwork because he was an artist, not just an architect and developer, but he was an actual artist. So many of these embellishments on the building are his own design. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now we're entering the village of Coconut Grove. See okay. that orange building? That's the mutiny. Okay. Where the cocaine cowboy Scarface was filmed. Wow. Um, I think Giselda now they make reference to, they make reference to the mutiny, but it's not the mutiny in the Giselda movie. That's someplace in LA. It no, it looked like a big resort. But it was a funky little place. And at any given time, if you went there, it was all filled with notorious cocaine cowboys. Wow. And, um, you know, Scarface wasn't the only one. You know, we had Escobar. We had all these guys that used to come down. They were there. all in that orange building. Oh, they'd hang out there. That was the club that they would go to. And, um, it was pretty amazing now in retrospect how, how blatant everything was. And you'd go to the bathroom and... Just so obvious. So obvious. But it wasn't in a sense of no one was trying to harm anyone. It's just how business was done back then. Correct. And I think especially with the Colombians, um, they, they, the crime was amongst each other, not mm -hmm. so much um, the, the normal people. But this whole area now... This um, is the downtown area. Downtown Coconut Grove. Very cute. This part pretty much looks the same. Really? It's just the shops have changed. Now all these low scale buildings, this village has been bought and they are going to be building some giant towers here. This is the charm of Coconut Grove. This is the selling point here. And can you even tell me about the, the trees of how everything, I noticed that when we drive in here, immediately you almost get a little bit more shade because the trees are so different than Miami. It's not your classical palm tree. Absolutely. This whole area back in here, as a matter of fact, is a state park. It's called the Barnacle. And um, this is the entrance. And this oh, is, yes. Uh, the original Monroe House. So it's wild to see a, a state park in the middle of a, a community. But all of this is protected. And that is what Co Coconut Grove is known for is the um, tropical foliage. Candy from Miami, where are we on this lovely street? We are on Charles Avenue, the oldest street in Coconut Grove. This is the West Grove, West Coconut Grove, also uh, known as the Black community uh, lived here, the Bahamian. Coconut Grove was established by Bahamians, so most of the houses are going to have a Bahamian feel to them. This is Mariah Brown, and she was a um, worker at the Peacock Inn that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And she was the first woman to own a house, let alone a black woman yeah, to Lovely. own a house. This is the oldest house in Dade County. It has um, been put on the national landmark list, so it is going to be restored. And thank God. That's but, wonderful. But this area now is has also transitioned. And this is the oldest house in Miami-Dade. And yeah. Dade County right here. Miami is not great at preserving its history, as you can see. You know, so much new get, development. Yeah, and things just get torn down. Um, we call it demolition by neglect. 
because although it will be put on a preservation list, it might take years and years and years. And by then the building is already... It's rotted and then they have the green light to go ahead and tear it down. And that happens continuously here. Thank goodness we do have a stronger preservation movement that's happening now in Miami because so much has been eradicated. Mm -hmm. um, they're desperate to try to save it. This neighborhood was exclusively Black Bahamian and now it's... Um, because of housing and the need for housing. Now this area has been encroached and you're gonna see what used to look like this mm -hmm. and what we have now. Um, sadly, the, the architecture doesn't blend into what the culture is. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think many of us that are into preservation would have liked them to have brought in a um, more of a Bahamian architecture here mm -hmm. and stayed with that but it, it's all very modern now so okay we'll see. we are currently rolling up to a cemetery right now is that correct yeah, it's a historic cemetery it's the the old uh coconut grove cemetery now allegedly may not be true. um in the 60s and 70s it became a big dealing area because you know we had a huge drug trade here and it was an area where people could go and buy marijuana and um, it became such a thriving industry, it came in a brown bag and it was stamped graveyard. And that's how you knew where that particular marijuana came from. These roads are historic, they cannot be widened, which is wonderful. And then when you look at the names of the streets, they mostly are named after um, Indian, different Indian names. Okay. Um, a lot of them are and you can see believe it or not we have hills here yes <laughs> and I'll just this is a typical coconut grove street stunning and it is absolutely gorgeous and these homes are why anyone would want to live in coconut grove this is a true neighborhood feeling does not feel like you're in Miami at all no and that is what makes coconut grove so special we still value our trees like this. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Oh, there are some peacocks. Woohoo! Which are like pigeons. Uh, yes. All right. So now we are going to go up the highest hill in Coconut Grove. You see this? Are we going up it right now? Oh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this is the highest point in Coconut Grove. Now we used to go with our bicycles and now you see how it dips again yes that's big time these wow are, these are our mountains you can go snowboarding down this hill you can go snowboarding <laughs> and right here to the right is your typical homes that were built here but aren't they incredible okay so hang on we're going down the hill <laughs> okay coral rock so a lot of your homes were built out of the coral rock material. It's not popular anymore because when we got um, air conditioning, you can't really seal the coral rock. So now, instead of the whole home being built, it's usually a facade of coral rock. Okay. And this is all coral right here. All coral rock. Now, coral rock was the perfect thing to build with because it kept the house cool in the summer because it's so porous. And then most places down here, believe it or not, we had a fireplace, a little fireplace. And when you lit the fireplace, it kept the house warm. Very like nice. That. We pride ourselves in our canopies mm -hmm. of the trees. It's stunning. The reason this is such a great thing, again, a canopy, a hammock, they call this, protects you from the hurricanes. So this foliage that we're seeing right now and driving under is actually protecting and good for the environment and sustainable and good for natural disasters. Well, absolutely. Candy in Miami. Yes. We are at a single family home. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? This is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's house, a very, very important pioneer to the area who um, unfortunately is known now because of the shooting of the school, but she was integral to the Everglades. If it not for Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, we would not have the protected Everglades. She was a reporter and she went down to the Everglades to report on the Indians, fell in love with the area, wrote a very, very important mm. book called River of Grass. Okay. And from there, uh, wrote to the state to get it protected in it as a national state park. 
So her house, this is where she lived all of her life, built in 1926, in the middle of Coconut Grove, residential area. Yes. And um, it has been protected, but not yet restored. And we just happened upon it today, and happily found out that they are working on it. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful people that we just met that are restoring the hotel in such precious detail. Mm -hmm. The hotel, the house. And uh, soon it will be a public place where people can come, small groups of people can come. For tours. For tours yeah. to learn more about Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and the work that she did. So thanks to Marjorie, we now have the Everglades protected. And was she writing her petitions to protect the Everglades in this house? Yes, she grew up here uh, since, well, this was since 1926. She died at, I think, 109. Wow. And she was a, a voracious writer. So she's written many, many books. But yes, all of her activist work happened in this little house. I love that. Thank yeah. you so much. So we want her to be remembered for who she was, not just because of a school shooting. Yes. Okay, because what was important. going to happen before, did they want to not protect the Everglades? Or she just felt the need to make sure that they were protected? Absolutely. Just to be she preventative instead of right. reaction. She realized it was a natural and very unique ecosystem that we had down there in the Everglades. Yes. And it was uh, literally a river of grass because that's what's so unique about the Everglades is it's marshland. Yes. And just the amount of... Um, of the different types of species that live there, the plant species, the orchid species, mm -hmm. it needed to be protected. Mm -hmm. And it's what filters our water, too. Wow. So without the Everglades, we probably would not be here. Wow. So we needed it protected, and it is a state park. It's a national state park now, so. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was great yeah, info. Thank you. Lovely house. Yes. And it will be restored, hopefully, within the coming weeks, a few months. That's what he said. Uh, okay. Pretty soon. So be on the excited. lookout for when the live tours go um, live. Yep. Marjorie <laughs> Stoneman Douglas. Woohoo! This concludes our tour. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank Lizzie. you for showing me along today. Yes, absolutely. So much more to see, and we'll do that another time. I love it. And if you could summarize it in a few sentences, what are the biggest takeaways for this area that people should take away from this video? Coconut Grove is one of the last remaining natural areas in the Miami area. You're never going to see, as you saw, um, such shaded streets, yes. which is very, very, you know, sustainability right now. On the water, um, moments from the water, if you're not on the water, tropical and what old Miami truly, truly was, uh, is this entire area and uh, Bohemia, Thank which you we so all love. Yes. <laughs> you know? It was great meeting you. Thank you. Oh, this was lovely. <laughs> yeah, so yes. much